It's been a remarkable year full of literally sunny news. Our solar RFP that Dairyland issued in 2015 resulted in 15 solar projects in our member service cooperative territories. The largest solar rollout in Wisconsin history to date. These projects and much more underscore our theme today, United We Shine. As a cooperative initiative, the solar farms are being constructed in the service areas of our member cooperatives. These solar initiatives have a real local impact and demonstrate our combined focused strategy and this happens because of our unity. Together, we crafted a plan to diversify our resources while providing local renewable energy. This energy is for your member consumers. And together, we worked with old and new friends to determine the final project sites. And I'm pleased to say that today, 19 of the 15 15 solar sites are online, and the remainder will be completed by the end of the year. Dairyland's leadership in solar energy was recognized with a 2016 Project of Distinction Award from the Solar Energy Industries Association. The Dairyland family was also commended for our solar initiatives by several other high-profile groups. These include Renew Wisconsin, who's here today, the Wisconsin Sustainable Business Council, and also the Environmental Law and Policy Center. When I was a Girl Scout, our mantra was, make old friends, but keep the old. One is silver, the other is gold. The success of our solar project launch is a result of cooperative unity and positive relationships with old and new friends. The solar project developers, SoCore Energy and Grow Solar, are examples of our new friends. Their expertise has been a real asset for us. DistribuGen, NRTC, and the Dairyland team are old friends who work together on the solar projects for the benefit of our members. Throughout my remarks, I'm going to reference our strategic imperatives because they navigate us to a successful, sustainable, and united future. Dairyland's democratically elected board of directors serve as guardians of the strategic imperatives. They set the strategy that leads us forward in unity to shine, to create a future that's better than our past, to make the best better, as they say in 4-H. That's the essence of our cooperative purpose, another strategic imperative. This imperative establishes the expectation that we live the cooperative principles to leverage our cooperative advantage. The cooperative purpose reminds us to value our old and new friends. As Thomas Paine, one of America's founders, said, it's not in numbers but in unity that our greatest strength lies, and this is the crux of our cooperative purpose. A shining example of cooperative purpose and unity is the merger of Hawkeye and Tri-County. On January 1 of this year, they united to become my energy. And this merger yields financial, operational, and efficiency benefits for all. And you just heard from Drew Parrish regarding the history of Dairyland's formation and the pivotal role that the wholesale power contract played in the creation of our cooperative. Drew articulated that the wholesale power contract fulfills the very purpose behind being a G&T, to provide power to rural users at an affordable cost. This binding contract was created to benefit the system as a whole, exactly because the system as a whole is what makes us strong. Again, unity. United we stand, divided we fall. 
The timeline that you see on the screen outlines the deliverables of the task force charged with evaluating alternatives and making recommendations on the wholesale power contract. Your input, all member input, will be sought continuously throughout this process. The evaluation of this wholesale power contract is undertaken to ensure that we stay well positioned in our changing world. But another way that we prepare for positioning ourselves in a changing world is through our strategic imperative, resource diversification. To achieve this imperative to diversify our energy mix, we created a long-term strategy, and we call this the preferred plan. This preferred plan will provide members with safe, reliable, sustainable, affordable energy for decades. And we're going to stay the course on our resource diversification plan regardless of the outcome of legislative actions or regulatory actions or even global politics because diversification is simply good, smart, prudent, solid business. Sustainability is at the heart of Dairyland's preferred plan. We pursue initiatives that are socially, economically, environmentally, and technically sustainable. Our pollinator gardens are just one example of our sustainability. All of our solar sites are going to have pollinator gardens to benefit the bee and butterfly populations. And when it comes to strategic planning, we do what we say we're going to do. Two years ago, as part of our preferred plan, we announced an RFP, a request for proposal, for up to 25 megawatts of solar energy. And then last year, we announced the project partners. This year, nearly 21 megawatts of the solar projects are close to completion. Last year, also as part of our preferred plan, we announced our investment in the 98 megawatt quilt block wind farm in southwestern Wisconsin. In addition, we stated our intent to evaluate additional wind projects as they became feasible and economic. Construction of the quilt block is underway and will be complete by year end. This Barton project was a power purchase agreement initiated by Dairyland and its 80 megawatts of renewable energy right in Iowa. Again, we do what we say we're going to do. The Barton Wind Farm opportunity resulted from Dairyland's participation in the National Renewable Cooperative Association. These alliances with old and new friends bring us value. So two years in a row, we've announced major resource diversification news as part of our annual meeting and as part of our preferred plan. This year will be no different. We've talked for a very long time about the need to add natural gas as a, renew a renewable enabling resource. And today, I'm especially excited to announce Dairyland's partnership with Minnesota Power in a combined cycle natural gas plant right here in Superior, Wisconsin. Dairyland and Minnesota Power will share output at 50% each. And I'd like to ask our project partners and our project leads from Dairyland to come and join me on the stage. So they'll come up from either side, but while they're making their way up, I want to tell you a little bit about the project and our partner, Minnesota Power. The project is named the Namaji Trail Energy Center because it's located on the shores of the Namaji River right in Superior. The location is adjacent to the service territories of Bayfield Electric and our other northern Dairyland cooperatives, where these cooperatives have served their members for decades. The site 
is also adjacent to Minnesota Powers territory, where they have served customers in northern Minnesota for over a hundred years. The facility will be a 525 to 550 megawatt combined cycle natural gas plant. And it's scheduled to be online by 2024, contingent on regulatory approvals. The unit will be 60% less carbon intensive than a coal-fired unit. This is excellent news for our cooperative members and Minnesota Power's customers. This combined cycle natural gas unit enables renewables. The fuel availability on this site is excellent. Two pipelines traverse the area. The industrial location is ideal. And the plant will preserve reliability and affordability of power in this region. And the timing is perfect for our load growth needs. The development will benefit Superior and the Douglas County region. The project economics are favorable and the technology is top notch. Minnesota Power is a regulated utility headquartered in Duluth. It's one of the several subsidiaries of Elite. I've worked with the employees of Minnesota Power for over two decades. I know them all to be honorable, hardworking, and customer focused. They have a history of strong partnerships with generation and transmission cooperatives like Dairyland. For example, they have a long-term alliance with Basin, Mincota, and GRE. In fact, I like to say that Minnesota Power has the heart of a cooperative. So today, I'm happy to introduce Al Hodnick, President and CEO of Elite. Now, if you could wave. Can't miss Mal. See Al right over there. And I'll talk about him in just a little bit. And our joint project team members, you can see the team members' names on the screens. And the ones who are here today, when I give their name, they'll just raise their hand so you can see who's who in this group. And I, I do have to say that we have a large group up here, but it pales in comparison to all the people who have been part of this really amazing project. So from Elite and Minnesota Power, we have Al Hodnick, Lisa Supinski, John Christensen, Jennifer Peterson, and Dan McCourtney. And from Dairyland, in addition to myself and, of course, our Wheeler folks here, we have John Carr, Ron Franz, Carol Ann Foley, Dave Becker, Steve Porter, Nathan Franklin, and Brad Foss. This combined team that you see here on the stage, along with many, many others, is responsible for making this project today that you'll hear about possible. So um, what I'm going to do now is ask a couple of our Dairyland team members to unveil the artist's rendition of our Nemaji Trail Energy Center. There you go. It's... it's <laughs> <laughs> John didn't want to be Vanna White, but uh, we wanted you to see this. This has been long studied, long negotiated, and a hard won accomplishment by all of the people that you see here and many others. So again, if I could just ask you all for all their hard work, one more round of applause for the folks. Thank you for coming. So again, I want to thank Al and the whole team for coming here. As a demonstration of Elite's commitment, CEO Al Hodnick, who you'll see exiting the stage here, attended Dairyland's board meeting in April. I know Al is a very busy person, and I appreciate him coming here again to be with us. I've worked with Al in various industry roles, 
and I can attest to his integrity and to his solid business judgment. And I'd like to paraphrase Al. He's my long-term colleague and old friend and now partner CEO. During our team dinner in Duluth when we signed the project, he remarked that this project has been on the drawing board for a very long time. And he said, it would have been a shame to squander this opportunity on a simple cycle facility. Today, we have the right project, the right site, the right technology, the, it's the right time, and we have the right partners. And I couldn't agree more. The, Dima the Nimaji Trail Energy Center is important for both of our companies as we mutually diversify our resources with a world-class renewable enabling resource. The graphic on the screen depicts how natural gas plants provide critical backup for intermittent renewable sources of power like solar and wind. Natural gas plants can ramp up and down very quickly. They respond to the instantaneous need for electricity on the grid. The Nimaji Trail Energy Center will respond on demand, providing the energy required by our membership and by Minnesota Power customers. They will have this power exactly when they need it, at the flip of a switch. And this is what our preferred plan is all about. Smart, measured, prudent diversification that enables renewables and ensures reliability, sustainability, and affordability. I'd like to turn now to another important strategic initiative, our competitive service and growth. Because if you're not growing, you're dying, and low rates are the best economic development utilities can have. Dairyland pursues a smart growth strategy to add business and jobs that benefit our entire system. Our staff works alongside with you, our member cooperatives, to tap into new business projects. And thanks to the forward thinking and hard work of the Southern Minnesota Energy Cooperatives, whom we call SMEC, and Joe Carroll, our entire system will benefit from the acquisitions they've made. Their acquisitions result in a 20% growth in the Dairyland system by 2025. Growth, of course, ties to financial strength. And growth facilitates stable rates. As you can see on the screen, Dairyland's had no rate increase in 2017, a minimal increase in 2016, flat rates in 2015, and a rate decrease in 2014. The chart compares Dairyland to regional G&Ts. The green line represents Dairyland, and you can see how our competitive position keeps improving. Our transmission investments demonstrate our commitment to growth as well as to reliability. We collaborate with neighboring utilities to strengthen regional infrastructure and the newly constructed CapEx 2020 line, the under construction Badger Cooley line, and the proposed Cardinal Hickory Creek line are examples of collaborations that improve reliability and add value for our members. Dairyland's 9% ownership in the Cardinal Hickory Creek line utilizes the valuable river crossing at Cassville. This project's estimated to have about a 20 million return on investment for our Dairyland members. And this will happen while strengthening regional infrastructure. Our strategic alliances with old and new friends demonstrate the importance of unity. And the alliances are key to maintaining financial strength and fulfilling our vision. Unity is vital to financial security. And we need financial strength to weather the storms. You'll hear later from Phil Moylene that our 2016 financial performance is very strong. 
The Dairyland Board of Directors makes financial decisions that are in the best long-term interest of our cooperatives, of the collective. Our strategic financial plan sets direction to maintain Dairyland's A credit rating as well as other strong financial metrics. Today, Dairyland is a $1.6 billion cooperative with 550 employees and over 3,000 miles of transmission line and nearly 300 substations. Our financial forecast projects that we grow to over 2.5 billion in plant by 2025. That's a 61% increase in the next eight years. We're a complex, capital-intensive business. So we have to stay financially strong. But we also have to stay safe. The safety culture is my number one priority. Our most important goal is meeting our aspiration of zero fatalities, zero debilitating injuries, and zero incidents. The team at Dairyland has heard me say this over and over again, and I say it because it's so important. And I will not rest until we achieve our goal of zero. The charts that you see illustrate that we're making measurable progress on safety. You'll notice a drop in both our recordable incident rate and our um, work days off rate. The three-year rolling average also trends down, but we must stay vigilant because one incident is one too many. As part of our safety journey, we asked employees to complete a survey to assess our status on safety. We were encouraged to see that 93% of our employees said their coworkers support our safety program. A strong safety culture leads to operational excellence, which includes our plant decommissioning. And we are in the midst of decommissioning our 50 megawatt nuclear plant, the La Crosse Boiling Water Reactor. For a small plant that's been shut down for nearly 30 years, LACBAR receives a lot of time and attention. In 1973, Dairyland purchased LACBAR for $1 from the Atomic Energy Commission. Dairyland established a nuclear decommissioning trust fund for the eventual retirement of that unit. And by 2016, the trust fund was valued at $94 million. We're concluding our final work on decommissioning with our new friend, Energy Solutions. In addition to removing the structures at LACBAR, we need to address storage for the spent fuel. The government was mandated by the Nuclear Waste Policy Act to begin receiving spent fuel at a national repository by January of 1998. 20 years later, we still don't have a national repository. Last fall, Dairyland settled our second round of litigation with the U.S. government. This settlement was for $73.5 million. Net proceeds that were issued to our members were $47.6 million. And Dairyland is making plans to file yet a third claim for damages. We're nearing our final chapters of the LACBAR story. And this facility is truly historic. Um, and we've created a video for you that captures its history. I hope that you're going to enjoy this eight-minute glimpse back into the LACBAR history and a glimpse forward towards its eventual decommissioning. So we'll see the video. So there you have it, our LACBAR history and a look to the future. And we have some um, retirees here in the room, and I know that they have many fond memories of uh, working in the nuclear industry. We'll keep you posted. But LACBAR is not the only Dairyland facility that's in the process of decommissioning. Dismantlement of the retired Alma generating station is also underway. This summer, we're going to remove all structures on site with the exception of the stack. We're still evaluating alternatives for removal of the 700-foot stack. 
But in keeping with sustainability, all materials will be salvaged or recycled. And by fall, about 61 million pounds of demolition materials will be removed, repurposed, or recycled. Dairyland employees are united in bringing out the best in every part of our business. Our coal facilities, complete with our 300 million in environmental control technology, are still essential to our reliability. This investment in environmental equipment has greatly decreased emissions, including reducing sulfur dioxide emissions by over 85% and nitrogen oxide emissions by 70%. Coal units remain the backbone of our generation fleet. And our power plant workers remain industry's unsung heroes. For the fourth consecutive year, Dairyland's Genoa 3 plant and JPM Magic plants achieved EPRI's world-class status for minimal forced outage rates due to boiler tube failures. Reliable power is the lifeblood of our industry. And in late 2016, we embarked on a major maintenance outage at our Genoa plant. The outage lasted 20 weeks and cost $16 million. It required over 70,000 Dairyland staff hours. The Dairyland team overcame unanticipated challenges, and the outage was safely and successfully completed. As cooperatives, we're guided by our cooperative principles. And 2017 began with our power delivery and safety staff living the principle of cooperation among cooperatives. 18 Dairyland employees spent New Year's week far from their homes in South Dakota. Our fellow G&T East River Electric Cooperative had sustained major outages after ice storm downed 500 poles in their service territory. And East River needed more resources to restore the light, heat, and power. As the photos show, everyone loves line workers. They are our everyday heroes. Our line workers also work hard to maintain our system. The major rebuild of Dairyland's 161 KV, called our Q1 line, is just one example. The Q1 is critical for reliability here in the La Crosse area. The project is another example of how our alliances bring value. By having 25 miles of the Q1 line built as part of the CapEx 2020 line, we not only relieve congestion, but we bring economic benefits to our members. Our industry is high tech and our information technology department is responsible for keeping the lights on behind the scenes. Dairyland's IT team remains vigilant against threats of cybersecurity and it protects our systems with robust systems and processes. We've embarked on some IT initiatives to modernize our organization with more efficient platforms and projects. Dairyland's most important asset is our people. And I'm grateful every day for the united, highly skilled employees who we have here at Dairyland. Many of them are sitting in the back and getting ready to be recognized. Their dedication, experience, and can-do attitude makes good things happen for our members and keeps bad things from happening. Dairyland's Human Resources Department developed several initiatives to sharpen our skills and help attract and retain top talent that we need. And we've bolstered our succession planning to develop tomorrow's leaders to take us into the future. In fact, as of Monday, June 5th, three of our Dairyland executive team members began temporary job rotations. You'll see here on the organizational chart, from your left to right, Phil Moylene in a new role as Chief Administrative Officer and CFO, Rob Palmberg on rotation to lead our strategic planning area, and John Carr as VP of Generation. 
These job rotations and others will enable a greater knowledge and appreciation for the people's people, processes, and systems. And this will make us all better. Now, in closing today, I'd like to end with a quote from a favorite book. All I really need to know I learned in kindergarten. The book offers life lessons that are worth returning to, especially to us as cooperatives. The author points out, it doesn't matter what you say you believe, it matters what you do. We not only proudly proclaim that we are cooperative, we act cooperatively. We are electric co-ops, we are formed by the people, for the people, and we live our cooperative principles. Together, united, we will shine for decades to come. So I want to thank you all, new and old friends, for joining us today. Thank you.